Good afternoon guys, Daniel back here again from Single Mole Jack and welcome back to our new series, episode number 19. Uh, it's actually episode number two, but it's beer number 19 out of 20 and we're working our way uh, down to beer number one. Um, so it's the Amarok Build and Beers Review. Um, sitting on the tailgate on the Amarok again and uh, we're out at, uh, out at our farm out at Stanthorpe Way, so dams in the background, we've just had a big few days working and uh, finally getting a chance to film a video and uh, crack a beer open, so stay with us for uh, review number 19. So guys, I'm super excited about this one. This is beer number 18 on the Gab's Hottest 100, and it's the Bent Spoke Brewing Co. Cluster 8. Uh, it is an Imperial IPA, so it's a double IPA. It is 8.8%. Um, I'm not gonna have too many of these because it's, um, you know, it's quite full on. One, one can, 375ml can, is actually 2.7 standard drink. So um, while we're talking, I'm going to crack it open. It's a really, really nice labeling on the can. Nice black can, limited release. Um, if you can find this, I've been told, I haven't actually tried it, but I've been told that it's... Oh, wow, okay. Now that is, that is an absolute flavor bomb. Huge difference compared to the uh, Four Pines Pacific Ale number 20 that we tried uh, last time. Um, that packs a, a, a definite punch, um, you know, full of hops, uh, full of malt, full of flavours. A um, little bit fruity and citrusy, not a whole lot, bit of yeast in there. Um, but as you can see in here, it's a 10 out of 10 for hops. Um, that is an absolute cracking beer if you can find it. Um, big shout out to... Uh, celebrations in Pimpama. Go down there and see Shane. He has been so super helpful. I couldn't find these anywhere, any Dan Murphy's, Liquor Lands, nowhere. He had them and he's got a whole selection of craft beers that are, um, you know, absolutely fantastic. He gets the, the first releases down there if any of the um, breweries are doing a, um, a, a release. So um, go down and see Shane at Celebrations Pimpama and he'll definitely sort you out. So, anyway, enough about the beer. Enough about the beer now. Cracking beer, by the way. What have we done to the Amarok? First of all, before I get started, uh, we've done a few things. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone uh, on the first episode, uh, number 20, who have uh, essentially you know, put comments in there and subscribed to the channel and uh, really thank you to the, to the Amarok community for, for tuning in, really appreciate it. It's the first Amarok I've ever owned. Um, so everyone's been giving me good ideas of you know, what products to get, what mods to do, in what order. Uh, as I said, really, really appreciate it, guys. So what have we done? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, not a whole lot of performance or upgrade uh, in terms of mods. <laughs> But we have done a few things and spent a bit of money on the car. So the, the biggest thing, as you can see, we didn't have last time is the fiberglass canopy. It is a Trek canopy and I got them to fit it. Uh, they're up at, uh, I think it's called Cardiff, which is up near Redland uh, Bay, just on, on the north side there of Brisbane. Uh, I think his name was Justin up there at uh, Trek. And he did, these guys did a fantastic job. They had it fitted in less than two hours, did it all, um, bolted it all on, uh, wired up the, um, keyless entry so the back door works with keyless entry We've got the flip up side doors as you can see there on the side I didn't want the, the slides as I said before I didn't want to go with a full aluminium canopy on on the chassis or a, or a tray mount I had that on the old Navara and it just wasn't practical for everyday use I, I love the thing for camping and off-road but I just didn't use it enough to get the I guess the benefits out of it. Uh, so what I like about this is I can still see out the back window, a lot less drag, so you don't have it sticking out the side. So I'm not using you know extra fuel and, and things like that. Plus it's a lot cheaper. Not as practical because you haven't got access. It's not as big. Can't do you know it's not not as flexible as what an aluminium canopy is. But at the end of the day, it's still going to do the job uh, for the price. I think I paid it was just over three thousand for this canopy uh, that's color coded and fitted so I didn't have to do anything with the with the keyless entry as well so big shout out to you guys while I was there also got Justin's guys to put on the roof racks okay nothing special I think they're just uh, whisper bars at the front and uh, just their sort of base model uh, what do you 
you call it, roof racks on, on the back of the canopy that they drilled into it uh, and um, fitted it all there because I it was more out of practicality than looks or performance or anything like that. I needed to carry some big lengths of timber, some trestles, uh, some planks, um, some, some angles, all bits and pieces because we're doing a few renos at the moment. So uh, it's really been handy to have those roof racks. I've used them half a dozen times in the last two weeks, I guess, since I've, I've got it fitted out. So that's basically that. Uh, the only thing you can't see, which is sitting right underneath me, is a tow bar. Okay, we got a, a tag tow bar fitted. Uh, the guys at, I think they're called East Coast, I'll have to fact check myself on that, East Coast tow bars at uh, Yatla. They were, once again, really, really good to deal with. Um, that cost me about $800 uh, fitted, and uh, they came to me, so I didn't have to drive the car anywhere. They came to work, fitted it all up within 30, 40 minutes, and I was good to go. So it's a three and a half ton tow bar. I don't have the brake controller at the moment, uh, but it's got the wiring, has got the provision to do that, so I can put that in uh, whenever I need to. Uh, at the moment, I've only got a two ton trailer, which I've been towing. I've probably used it a dozen times since I put the tow bar on, so it's been you know, really, really useful for me. Um, so, so that's been, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm limited at the moment to two tons because I don't have the brake controller, but I've only got a two ton trailer, so I'm, I'm laughing. It's no, no issues for me at the moment. So that's about it, guys. Um, in terms of next mods, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do on the list. I've still got the snorkel, I've got the bull bar. I'm still deciding which bull bar to get. Um, you know, really like the, the look and the practicality of the rival bars uh, in, a, in a powder coated matte black. I think it would suit this white pretty well. Um, still need to do a bit of research on the, um, what do you call it, on the strength of the aluminium bars. Mm. Great beer, but that will definitely sneak up on you. So the bull bar, got to do spotlights, we've got to do lift, we've got to do tyres. I've been getting a few recommendations, the, the BFG all-terrains, you know, really good. Also the Falcons, um, the AT3s, I've, I've heard are really good. Um, so a few recommendations there. I, I really like the look of uh, someone sent me some comments for the wheels. Um, completely forgot what wheels they were in a, in a matte black, but they were, they were really nice as well. So I'm getting some really good recommendations as I go. Got to do the snorkel. Uh, I've got to do probably the next practical thing I'm going to do is a dual battery system. Uh, that's quite urgent for me. Uh, because you, as you can see, I've got the Waco fridge in the back, uh, but it's not hooked up to anything because I don't have an outlet and I don't have a dual battery system or a DC, DC um, charger. So they're the things on the list, guys. If there's anything else that I've, that I've missed, um, definitely some headlights for this as well. I want to get the LED headlights. Um, you know, that, that's, that's really about it for now. I'm, I'm really glad you're tuning in. Hopefully you're getting some, some value out of it. Uh, we're going to be spending a lot more time out here at, at Stanthorpe on the weekend. So come with us on the, on the journey uh, of the beers. Beer number 17 uh, is, oh, sorry, beer number 18 is going to be next. We've just finished now doing 19. So I think that's called a beer farm brewery from WA. Okay. Uh, so I've just got, I think that's also an IPA or it might be an Imperial IPA, but uh, I'll fact check myself on that one. That's going to be the next video coming up. Uh, we've just got to do a few months of the car and figure out exactly what's going to be next. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys soon. Cheers, everyone. See you next time.